Let me just point out that from my research, this is not really traditional, well, anywhere from what I've seen unfortunately. But it is an absolute takeout classic. And you think we're not gonna make the best version ever? Because if you do, well, you'd be mistaken. Okay, so we're making Mongolian beef today. Where does that come from? I don't really know anymore at this point, but something about it rings in the air. Beautifully sauced, crisp beef. It feels right. It just makes a little bit of a and it's usually a dish that's pretty affordable, so now you're probably thinking, well, Josh, how am I supposed to balance affordability and quality and all these things? Well, hang on, because that's where today's sponsor, Butcher Box, comes in. Yes, the homies. Which is exactly where you can get both of those things in one, like bop, bop, bop. You know what I'm saying? And by that I mean ButcherBox is supplied by high quality farmers and high quality fishers. Fishermen, that's the word. You choose your box, your delivery frequency, you know, however much, however little you want, brother. Then ButcherBox takes that and ships it directly to your door in eco-friendly packaging, by the way. So it's less time spent at the store and more time cooking a delicious, beautiful meal. And you know how I feel about that. So it's sustainable, delicious, high quality. I mean, what more do you want, okay? I'm trying to help you here. Okay. So if you want to try it out, be sure to click the link in the description. You'll get $10 off your first order. And by the way, there is a membership where you literally get bacon for free for the rest of your life. Do I need to say more about that? I mean, I hello? Anyway, back to Mongolian beef. From what I've researched, it looks like Mongolian beef has nothing to do with Mongolian cuisine whatsoever, which is a bummer. I've had it from places that it's delicious and I've had it from places that it's horrible, but it's just one of those takeout classics that I really love making a rendition of my own at home that has some level of tradition or some level of involved, and that's what I want. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Okay, despite its lack of tradition, this is quite possibly one of the easiest stir-fried dishes in the game. So no complaining to all right, first things first, rice. As you know, get some good medium grain rice. Okay, so our last upload in the Big Mac, we announced the cookbook. It's right here. But I have something very important to say. Three hours after we announced that, it went to number one in all books. Number one, it's pre-order time now, which is the most important phase, so if you wanna get one, please get one now. But more importantly, massive, massive, massive thank you. I'm totally befuddled. That's a good word. The point is, everybody worked really hard on this. We're all very, very proud to see it go to number one. It is number one in the US, Canada, Australia, in all books. Not just number one in some subcategory. Number one, because of you guys, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. Link in the description. Anyway, back to Mongolian beef. Please rinse your rice twice or I will call Uncle Roger hey, and it's gonna be a bad day. Your rice just won't be as good, is what I'm trying to say. Then cook it in a proper rice cooker for the musical quartet and for the perfect rice. But that's just my favorite way to do it. Now let's talk beef. You'll need one pound of flank steak, something decently marbled because we will be cooking it around medium or maybe even slightly above. Slice that brother about a half an inch thick and you can certainly go thinner if you'd like, but I'd recommend freezing the beefy man for 15 to 20 minutes to make it easier to slice that thin. Once that's done, toss it into a bowl and place it to the side. Next Next, let's season our wok. Always season the wok. Why? Because nothing will stick and papa will still fuck you. To do that, simply pour in about three to four tablespoons of vegetable oil, heat that over medium high, swirling occasionally until the oil begins to smoke, then discard that oil and wipe it out with a paper towel. That's it, it's seasoned. Now, add in another three tablespoons of fresh vegetable oil and begin heating again over medium high. Now, while it's heating up, toss your beef with a quarter cup of cornstarch, half a teaspoon of ground white pepper, and a pinch of salt. Toss that to coat thoroughly, and now you have your dusted beef that kind of looks like some sort of bovine winter wonderland that's now ready to be shallow fried into oblivion. Now, once your oil is ripping hot, shake off the excess corn starch and shallow fry each piece of beef in batches to avoid overcrowding for two to three minutes per side or until beautifully browned like so. Placing to the side as they finish browning. Now once you're done with that, leave your heat on medium high and add in one bunch of green onions that's been cut into two inch segments. Let those sear for about 30 seconds. Toss and sear again till it gets some nice caramelization. Then add in one tablespoon of finely chopped ginger, two red Fresno chilies thinly sliced, two teaspoons of gochugaru. Stir fry that for about 45 seconds to get that good old fashioned wok hay. Then add half a cup of brown sugar, stir fry that in, then a quarter cup of dark soy sauce, a quarter cup of regular soy sauce, a quarter cup of water, a splash of rice vinegar, then let that boil and reduce for three minutes or until it begins to thicken slightly. Then add in your beef, toss and stir to coat thoroughly, and the sauce thickens all the way. It should be more of like a glaze consistency, if you will. Mmm, Papa's glazed meat, shimmering. Turn off the heat and add a small handful of Thai basil and five cloves of very finely chopped garlic. Stir that all in till thoroughly combined and beautifully fragrant. 
And that's literally it. That's your beef. Isn't she lovely? Now, if you want broccoli, I'd recommend breaking it down into nice florets, coating it with oil, and roasting it at 425 Fahrenheit on a foil-lined baking sheet until browned and lightly crisp. But that's up to you. If you want to be an extra little fancy, healthy little pants man, then you can do that. It's actually quite good with broccoli, though. Now, all you need to do is get a bowl, top it up heavily with your beautifully steamed rice, as much or as little as you want. Maybe a little extra sauce, if you're feeling saucy. Some finely shaved green onion, both for some green and that fresh onion flavor. Now that is a bowl of beef, and I'm ready to put it in my mouth. So let's do that. Okay, so despite the fact that this is not at all Mongolian in any way whatsoever, I'm pretty sure, it's just one of those classic takeout meals you can't you can't say no to. <sighs> that. Oh. Mama. The sauce is spicy, it's fragrant, it's sweet, it's salty, rich, umami. See, the beautiful thing about this is anytime you normally get Mongolian beef, like if you're going to P.F. Chang's, which is like, is this, is this a butt better? Is this, a, I don't even know anymore at this point. It's usually pretty underwhelming. The sauce is like too salty or, or it's just bland. This has a multitude of layers of all I have to say is no matter what Mongolian beef that you've ever had, this is probably going to be the best version, period. What in the gosh darn heck are you waiting for? You wanna know what else is full of Papa's glazed meats? B-roll. Alright guys, and that is it. So we made our Mongolian beef. Real quick, thank you to our sponsors, ButcherBox, for, well, sponsoring this video. Be sure to go to the link in the description to get your order. $10 off the first one. It's a beautiful thing. Now for the Mongolian beef, we done gun did it. I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. It was very balanced. It was sweet, salty, umami. It had balanced with acidity, a little bit of spice. It was just everything that I wanted. And more importantly, it had that good classic wok hay, the breath of the wok. And last, but certainly not least, is that it's extremely easy to make. And I know I I say that all the time, but you know what? I'm just trying to be honest with you. And whether you want to take me being honest as me being mean or me just trying to be truthful because that's what I'm trying to do here, it is easy. Now, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.